Built by Fred Barr in 1921, the Barr Trail led people to the summit of Pikes Peak, caused many encounters between the people who rode burrows up the trail, and allowed people to exchange unforgettable memories. For this documentary, I will be interviewing Eric Swab, a local historian, John Garner, a registrar for the Pikes Peak Marathon and Ascent, Matt Carpenter, multiple-time winner of the Pikes Peak Marathon and Ascent, and members of the Adaman Club. Fred Barr was the builder of Barr Trail. Barr built the trail because he wanted a route for his borough livery business that would take customers to the summit of Pikes Peak, and because he wanted people to have a way other than the cog to get to the top of the peak. In 1914, Fred Barr began exploring Pikes Peak to try to find a route for Barr Trail. While Fred Barr was making the route for Barr Trail, Many people said it would be impossible to build a trail up the steep slopes of Pikes Peak. Later, Barr proved them wrong. Finally, in 1918, after four years of exploring the peak, Fred Barr finished his route for Barr Trail. Once Fred Barr had finished making the route for Barr Trail, he started building the trail. But Barr didn't build the trail all by himself. He had a group of workmen helping him as well. In 1918, when Fred Barr began to build the Barr Trail, he started it at the top of the Manitou Incline, a cable car that would take people about a mile up the side of Pikes Peak. Later, the Forest Service added the extra three miles from the top of the incline to the trailhead we know today. At last, in 1921, after seven years, Fred Barr completed the Barr Trail. Once Barr Trail was completed, Fred Barr started using the trail for his borough livery business. With the Barr Trail and the business, Barr was able to encounter many people. Other than being a great place for Fred Barr's business, the Barr Trail had a huge effect on Manatee Springs. Well, it was definitely a um, major tourist attraction. The, uh, the, the, the big adventure that Barr offered was a a tour up uh, to the summit from the top of the incline. Tourists would ride the incline and about five o'clock in the afternoon Fred Barr would meet them, outfit them with uh, a burrow and clothes if they weren't properly attired and take them up to his camp and uh, feed them a, a supper and he had a place to sleep at his camp and then the next morning he'd get them up early in the morning give them a cup of coffee and put them back on the burrows and then they would ride up to the summit to watch the sunrise. And this was a very popular tourist attraction for many, many years. In fact, it was continued for more than 20 years after Fred Barr died. When the word got out that Barr Trail was finished, many tourists came to see Fred Barr's beautiful creation. Barr Trail attracted tourists because they liked the idea of a new adventure. These tourists turned Manitou Springs into an extremely popular city that is still thriving today. Bar Trail also greatly improved the economy of Manitou Springs. One of the main ways Bar Trail improved the economy in Manitou Springs is through the Pikes Peak Marathon. Beginning in 1956, the Pikes Peak Marathon goes to the top of Pikes Peak, then back down to the bottom of the peak via Bar Trail. This race has brought people from all over the world. Well, in general, every year you get almost all 50 states. Typically it's 48, 49 states. I think there was one year that there was 50, and then there's been as many as 22 countries in a year, too. Oh, okay. Uh, just a marathon. Um, the numbers are pretty straightforward. It's a $175 entry fee. Wow. And we cap it at around 900 folks actually registered, so whatever that works out to. Okay. Um, the ascent portion, $150 entry fee, we cap it around um, 2,000 folks registered. So. Oh, at that time of year, it's hard to get hotels. There, people yeah. pre book them the year before, they run the race, and then they book the next year's mm -hmm. races. So it's very important for the hotel motel industry. And then certain food groups like pasta and stuff that the runners eat before the races, they really get into it. According to the Colorado Springs Gazette, in 2000, the Pikes Peak Marathon brought in $70,000 in revenues for restaurants, shops, and innkeepers. The Bar Trail also affected the people living in Manitou Springs. It made them happier and more active. 
The Bar Trail also has many traditions. One of the most popular traditions is where a group of people called the Adaman Club go up to the top of Pikes Peak every New Year's Eve and shoot off fireworks at midnight. This tradition started in 1922 with Fred Barr and four other hikers. Actually, the, the, we call them the original Frozen Five members. Um, Ed and Fred Morath, two brothers. Uh, Willis McGee, Harry Stanley, who was a local photographer, and, Bar, and Fred Barr, of course. So those five started it. They did the, they climbed the peak, did their thing, and then then the, the following February is when they actually created the club. So okay. so they uh, I think it was February twenty second or twenty third. I can't remember. Okay. They uh, then they did, of course they decided to to name it Adman Club. They have one member a year, so adding and uh, and then we've done that pretty much ever since. There are a few years that one one year when we when they got to the 13th member, nobody wanted to be number 13, so they added two members that year, 12.5 and 13.5. Okay. And then there was one year during World War II where they didn't have a member. They just they did the crime, but they had. Along with traditions, there are also many memorable moments that took place on Bar Trail. There was some. Do you know his name, Michelle? Uh, yeah. Actually, we've got the exhibit right here. Let me. There was a guy who pushed a peanut up Bar Trail. Ulysses Baxter. Yeah. Ulysses, Ulysses Baxter. Baxter. In July of 1963. In July of 1963, pushed a peanut up Bar Trail to the summit with his nose. <laughs> oh gosh, that's a big question. One one story that I remember. Um, Every spring, uh, Fred Barr would, would uh, go up and, and maintain the trail. And uh, one year, he and his wife and a couple of his friends um, took uh, a couple of burrows, and one of the burrows was packed with dynamite to clear a boulder that had fallen down across the trail. Mm -hmm. And on the way up, that burrow slipped and fell off the trail and rolled over twice. No dynamite exploded. Fred went down and helped the burrow back to his feet, got him back on the trail, and they went on and did their work. Sadly, on April 2nd, 1940, at age 58, Fred Barr died from a heart attack. A memorial service was held for Barr on top of Pikes Peak, and although Barr Trail's creator is gone, it still continues to have an effect on people every day. Although Barr Trail is still being used today, it has changed a lot since the 1920s. I, I would say the bottom part is really heavily used because of the incline and it gets really crowded and the use is high. Once you get past the uh, incline area, the impact gets a lot less and the trail's in a lot better shape. But, uh, you know, it's a heavily used trail and it's popular and it's really a great, it's a great trail, so. Bar trail affects society today by increasing the amount of exercise people in Colorado Springs and Manitou Springs get, and by increasing the tourist rates in Colorado Springs and Manitou Springs. Overall, Bar Trail is an amazing creation that will continue to affect and improve thousands of people's lives for many years to come.